Welcome to an introduction to economics, brought to you by David Hopcroft of Park Bench Tutors. For more information about our tutorials, please visit parkbenchtutors.com. This short podcast is about equilibrium and disequilibrium. In previous podcasts, we looked at demand and supply as separate issues. Now we shall try and bring these ideas together. In particular, we are going to look at the effects of shifts on demand and supply curves on the price of goods. We shall start by considering the demand and supply curves of a normal good. Note that these will intersect. At this point, the demand for the good and the supply of the good are the same. This is a position of equilibrium, and the price at this point is known as the equilibrium market price. This is the price that buyers are willing and able to pay and is also the price that the producers are willing and able to supply. Take a look at this diagram. It is not as complicated as it might first seem. When the price of good X is at P1, then the quantity that is demanded is Q1. However, at price P1 the producers are willing to supply Q2. Clearly, there is an excess supply of good X over the demand for the good. Producers may react to this by reducing price. Excess supply is an economic force that exerts downward pressure on price. What happens when the price of X is at P2? A quantity Q3 of the good X is supplied, but the demand for good X is Q4, which is much higher. There is an excess of demand over supply. The producers may raise the price of X. We can say that an excess of demand causes an upward pressure on the price of good X. When the price has reached PE, then demand and supply are the same. We say we have reached the equilibrium price. In economics, equilibrium is a state of rest in which no economic forces are being generated to change the situation. A stable equilibrium is reached when the economic forces push the prices towards an equilibrium point. Now consider this diagram for the price of good Y. You have probably already guessed that we are considering a Giffen or Veblen good here. PE is the equilibrium price where demand and quantity supplied are the same. What happens when the price rises to P1? The quantity demanded now exceeds the supply. Q2 is greater than Q1. This pushes the price even higher, creating even higher demand. We say that we have a disequilibrium situation. If the price falls to P2, then supply exceeds demand. But if prices are reduced, so is demand. The situation moves even further from the equilibrium point. Now it really starts to get interesting. Typically, many goods are associated with other goods in a number of ways. That great British delicacy, fish and chips, can be used to show this. Cod can be substituted with haddock or place, or with other white fish such as Alaskan pollock. A different substitute might be beef burger, but not for the connoisseur of fish and chips. Goods linked to cod needed for fish and chips are potatoes for the chips and batter for the cod. We might also have added such items as corn oil or peanut oil for cooking. These are called complementary goods. The oil from cod is considered to be a jointly supplied product. If you fish for cod, then cod liver oil and cod fillets are both obtained from the fish. We will start by looking at the market for cod. The supply of cod is controlled by quotas set by the European Union to prevent fish stocks falling too low. Suppose the supply of cod is restricted by setting new quotas. This will cause the price of cod to rise. The supply curve shifts from SS to S1, S1. Before the price rise, the equilibrium point was at price P1 with quantity Q1 being supplied. After the shift, we see that a new equilibrium point will be established where P2 represents the new higher price and Q2 represents the lower quantity demanded. It is important to understand that at P1, when the supply is changed to S1, S1, There is an excess of demand. This is represented here by Q3, Q1. This excess demand is the economic force that pushes the price upwards. What happens to the price of a substitute good? If there is less cod around, there will be more demand for haddock. 
so the demand curve for Haddock shifts from DD to D1, D1. Before the shift in the supply of cod, there was an equilibrium set at price P1 with quantity Q1 being supplied. The shift in demand to D1, D1 sets a new equilibrium at price P2 and quantity Q2. The price has been driven upwards. The result of an increase in the price of good X will exert an upward pressure on the price of substitutes for X. If we are going to enjoy our cod, then we also need our chips, or fries if we were in the United States. How will the market for chips be affected? Before the change in supply of cod, there was an equilibrium at price P1 and quantity Q1. The price rise for cotton haddock will reduce demand, so the demand for chips falls from DD to D1, D1. We can see that this will move forward and move toward a new equilibrium point of a lower price, P2, with the reduced quantity Q2 being supplied. The effect is that the rise in price of good X exerts a downward pressure on the price of complementary goods. We said that cod liver oil was a jointly supplied good. If there is less cod, then there will also be less cod liver oil being produced. Before the supply was reduced, the equilibrium point was at price P1 and quantity Q1. Reducing the supply shifts the supply curve from SS to S1, S1. The new equilibrium point will be established at the higher price P2, with a reduced quantity of Q2 being supplied. The effect is that a fall in the supply of X will reduce the supply of jointly supplied goods and will exert an upward pressure on their price. Many goods are subject to sales tax. In the United Kingdom, value added tax, VAT, is a sales tax. In the United States, many states set their own sales taxes. If the good X is subjected to a sales tax of, say, 20%, then what will happen? To receive the same revenue after tax, then the price must rise from P before the tax to PT after the tax. This will effectively raise the supply curve from SS to S1, S1. The equilibrium point set at price P and quantity Q will shift. The new equilibrium is at price PT and quantity QT. The quantity QT is less than Q, so we see that demand has fallen. The distribution of tax between producer and consumer is called the tax incidence. In our example, the consumer was assumed to be paying the full amount of the tax imposed. If the demand is perfectly elastic, then the sales tax is likely to fall on suppliers, since the consumer demand is not going to alter. If the supply is perfectly inelastic, the sales tax is likely to fall on suppliers. If the demand is perfectly inelastic, the consumer will pay whatever the price, but the demand stays the same, so all of the sales tax will be borne by the consumer. Similarly, the sales tax will fall on the consumer if the supply is perfectly elastic. Economists are becoming more interested in the cost of goods that may at first sight seem to be free, such as air, or in some countries air and water. Providing that the supply exceeds the demand, there is no consequence. Supply will exceed demand even at a zero price. Suppose that the supply of fresh air is reduced as a result of pollution. The demand for fresh air may then exceed the supply. Air then becomes a scarce resource but still has no price. How we deal with pollution, when a free resource becomes a scare resource, is becoming of increasing interest. So far we have considered situations where supply and demand move towards an equilibrium point with a definite price and quantity at that point. However, in a market where external factors may set conditions of supply, or where plans are not realised, then a disequilibrium exists. How does this affect supply, demand and prices? In this case we are looking at a price ceiling. A price ceiling is when a maximum price is set for a good. Here P1 represents a price ceiling and is below what would appear to be the equilibrium price. The result is that the quantity demanded, Q2, will exceed the quantity supplied, Q1. 
The amount, Q2 minus Q1, is the excess demand. Often in these situations there is a black market for goods. Rationing during and after World War II in the United Kingdom resulted in black markets for a number of goods. The opposite situation is when a price floor is set. Goods may not be sold below that price. If this is above the equilibrium point then supply exceeds demand. The glut is measured as Q3 minus, sorry, Q4 minus Q3 on this map. The European Union set price floors and intervened to buy up excess supplies of wheat, wine, milk and other foods. When the economic forces cannot exert a pressure to find an equilibrium, we say that a disequilibrium exists. Yes, we are back to our Giffen goods again. Remember that here we found that economic forces could push the market further from an equilibrium and disequilibrium position, positions could persist. There must eventually, however, be some point at which demand starts to fall if prices continue to rise. This is illustrated at point B, which is then considered to be the equilibrium point. Below, sorry, if conditions are poor, then the planned harvest may well be above the actual harvest. If conditions are favourable, the actual harvest may be well above the planned harvest. The point E is the equilibrium point for an agricultural product. Suppose a result, as a result of a poor harvest the quantity produced is lower. Only QV units are produced. Then the price will continue to rise, reducing demand, until the point V is reached. A bumper harvest, QW, will exert a downward pressure on the price until the price of point W is reached. It is unusual for a response in production to be instant, or a response to demand to be instant. The gap is referred to as the lagged response. If the demand for good X increases from DD to D1, D1, then the price will shift from P1 to P2. This requires increased prices and or increased production, which may not occur straight away. Lags on the supply side may be because producers don't have the information, or they may be reluctant to increase production until they are quite sure the demand will stay higher and persist. A production, of la a production lag occurs with raising of animals for the market. The production of hogs in the United States was studied, giving rise to the cobweb model as an example of disequilibrium analysis. Essentially, demand for hogs depends on this year's market price, the supply of hogs, on the other hand, was determined by last year's price. So the supply depends upon P.E., which is the price that farmers expected would be the market price this year. On this map, P1 represents this year's price and supply exceeds demand because the farmer had expected P.L. minus P1 as the price. The farmers will then plan to reduce supply for the next year. If the supply is reduced to Q4, then the excess is smaller. The movement will be towards an equilibrium, but there is a lag because of the time taken to breed hogs, and the fact that the number being produced depended upon the price in the previous year. A quiet walk around a number of markets and supermarkets will show that the same good may be offered for sale at a wide range of prices. This is more noticeable when a good first comes onto the market for example the first asparagus crop of the year. However, after a period of time the range of prices becomes much narrower. It is unlikely to settle on a single price in a market economy because of competition. This ends our podcast on equilibrium and disequilibrium, brought to you by Park Bench Tutors and narrated by David Hopcroft. Thank you for watching and for listening. We wish you every success in your studies. For more information about our tutorials, please visit parkbenchtutors.com.